No one expected them to do this. First and foremost, I just want to give all glory and praise to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. First and foremost, you know, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, without him, nothing is possible. Let's pray. Almighty God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I think a huge thing that we've really just latched onto is eyes up. And you guys see us doing this and pointing up, but we're really like fixing our eyes on Christ. It is one of the rarest things to see athletes, let alone multimillionaire athletes, glorifying the name of God. I just gotta give God the glory, man. He, he challenged us to make us better. And I'm proud of my guys, man. This is awesome. It's legendary. First, I just gotta give all glory to God, man. Without him, none of this is possible, man. He deserves all the honor and praise. And more specifically, the name of Jesus Christ on live TV. The name which is above every other name. The Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is so encouraging and inspiring to see those athletes giving glory to Jesus Christ in a very specific sense. You know, I already have what I need from, from the Good Shepherd and, and Jesus. Because it gets very confusing these days when someone simply says that they want to thank God. First and foremost, I want to thank God. I feel so blessed to be standing up here right now. They may mean the God of the Bible, and at the same time, and depending on the person, they may mean some other false God. I want to thank God for protecting me. Thank you, God. We know for a fact that Beyonce was not giving thanks to the God of the Bible because a few moments later, within the same breath she just thanked her God, she said this. I'd like to thank the queer community for your love and for inventing this genre. So when you see someone thanking God and more specifically calling out the name of Jesus Christ on live TV, it brings so much honor, reverence, and clarity to their praise. The only salvation for this sin is the gospel. The only way to really cure that was on the inside is understanding that Jesus Christ died for our sins. One thing that we know for sure is that the kingdom of darkness and its demons do not like when you mention the name of Jesus. They do not like when you proclaim the name in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. What happened to you, USA? What happened to you? What's going on? You forget for the, the best of the best of the world. The name is Jesus Christ. What happened to you? Wake up, USA. Go for Jesus. People typically have the choice to say whatever they want on live TV. They may even want to proclaim the name of Satan and everything would be fine. Thank you to uh, Satan for giving me inspiration on how to play this role. But the moment that you choose to proclaim that name, to give honor to the name of Jesus Christ, that's when certain people will come out and try and rectify you. They will come out and tell you that you should not speak about that name. You should not speak of that name. Last question. Um, of course, you weren't in Florida. Bit of a controversial moment, Yo Romero, and I know this is a very positive thing. I'm not trying to rain on that parade. Quite frankly, I don't feel like it was as controversial as some may, may think, but I just wanted to get your take on what happened. No, it wasn't controversial at all, but the reality is this. You just won the biggest fight of your career, you know? Um, America doesn't want to hear your thoughts on Jesus, and, you know, keep that stuff at home. I know there are many of you who, on your jobs, you've been told, don't use that name. Some of you may have even been reprimanded for using that name. And, and here you are, you're forced, supposedly, to choose between your your job and your sustenance and feeding your family and, and using that name. And the temptation in that moment is to say, I, listen, I will do the same thing. I will say the same thing. I will just tiptoe around the name. There are many athletes and actors who claim to be Christians, but are afraid to mention the name of Jesus Christ. Their fear for men and their fear of losing brand deals and earthly opportunities is somewhat much more valuable than the name and the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what do they do? They avoid it at all cost. Number six, God is real. God loves you. God wants the best for you. Believe that. I do. And the moment you start being very specific about who that God is and that he hates sin and without faith in his son, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you will be damned to hell. The same people applauding you will condemn you. House Speaker Mike Johnson invited me to come in, in to open up Congress in prayer. And uh, yet there are existing rules that say, for example, you, you, can have, you can't have a prayer more than 150 words. You're, <laughs> you're, you're to avoid father, offend some people. You can't bring up Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior what? because that's prosperous. 
proselytizing. You can talk about God all you want. You can talk about going to church, reading the Bible. You can pray as many prayers you wish. Simply do not mention that name. Because the moment that you do is when the kingdom of darkness will stand as a whole to persecute you and even cancel you. Now watch very carefully how NBC edited out the name of the Lord Jesus Christ when this NFL player gave glory to his name. Your first NFL season and a record setting performance for you. What does this moment mean? I mean, it's been amazing being in this city for as short as I've been. But Bible says in 1 John 5 19, the whole world lies in the lap of the evil one. And as such, the systems of this world do not want anything to do with the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So they demand that you don't say that name, don't preach in that name, don't mention that name, and don't proclaim that name. And many so-called Christians fall for the tactics of the devil and distance themselves from the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we, we don't want to be a stumbling block and we don't want to offend people. So, so what we will do is we will keep talking about the same thing we 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 just won't directly refer to Jesus but but everybody who's a Christian will know exactly who and what we're talking about until they don't Peter and John answered them whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than God you must judge for we cannot but speak of what we have seen and heard. The apostles were convicted of the truth of the gospel and were not afraid to proclaim the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wherever they went. The apostle Paul himself says in Romans 1 verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Those athletes mentioning and giving glory to the name of Jesus Christ are not ashamed of him. They are not ashamed of the Savior. They know very well what it might cause them to say that name. They may never get certain brand deals. They may even be shunned ostracized and get kicked to the side for saying that name. But you know what? They do it anyway because they understand that Jesus Christ is far more better. He is far more precious. He is far more glorious than anything they could ever gain or possess in this world. What is it like to be the number two overall pick in the draft? Yeah, first and foremost, you ought to always give my Lord, my, my Lord and Savior all the credit. Jesus Christ, man. Without him, I wouldn't be here. It's the reason I'm here. You're getting emotional. Yes, ma'am. It took a lot of hard work. A lot of hard work, and you're going to a team that's looking for a new identity, got a new head coach, looking for a leader. What do you bring? I bring me. I bring a man of God. I bring a leader. The Lord Jesus Christ himself says in Mark 8, 36, For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? And there are millions of people who prefer to chase after the temple treasures of this world than to run after Christ. As crazy as it is, they prefer that which lasts a moment than the one who is eternal. Yeah, I feel like, you know, it's so cool, you know, seeing across the league and the other teams that you play, like other people that obviously believe in God and glorify God um, through everything. Um, I think it's awesome. And, and for me, I look at it as just our identity isn't in the sport of football. It's it's in who God calls us to be and, and what he wants us to do in life um, and what he says in the Bible. Um, and for us, obviously, we're playing football. It's our job, but it's not who we are. And, you know, we're loved no matter what because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Um, and we get to go and, and be transformed and, and love people through that. Um, we're football. It's our job and we want to do it well. But, man, it's not going to go perfect all the time. You know, you're going to win games and people are going to love you. You're going to lose games. People are going to hate you. And, and um, um, so as a believer and, and all the believers in the NFL, like that's what we mean by glorifying God, win or lose, like we're loved through him and because of him not based off of if we're a good football player or not. Few are the ones who understand the hope that they have in Christ Jesus. And I was so encouraged to hear Brock Purdy reflecting on the hope that he has in Jesus Christ. There will be good days and so will there be bad days. But through it all, we will give glory to Christ for what he has done for us on the cross. Our hope is not on something that is temporal, but it is secure by the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is our hope. He is our life. He is our greatest portion. I want you to listen very carefully to these softball players explaining the hope that they have in Christ through their victories and their losses. Watch this. Alex Scarborough with ESPN. For, for the players, I know you talked about keeping the joy of the game, but I'm curious. It's a long season, right? And you guys have had the target on your back the entire time, the win streak being number one. 
How do you handle the unique pressure that comes with that? How do you keep the joy for so long when anxiety seems like a thing that could very easily set in? Well, the only way that you can have a joy that doesn't fade away is from the Lord. And any other type of joy is actually happiness that comes from circumstances and outcomes. And um, I think Coach has said this before, but joy from the Lord is really the only thing that can keep you motivated, um, uh, just in a good mindset, uh, no matter the outcomes. Thankfully, we've had a lot of success this year, but if it was the other way around, uh, joy from the Lord is the only thing that can keep you embracing those memories, moments, friendships, and all of that. So uh, I would, that's really the only, the only answer to that because there's no other way that softball can bring you that um, because of how much failure comes in it and just how much of a roller coaster the game can be. 1,000% agree with Grace Lyons. Um, I went through that my freshman year. I I was so happy to win the call. I've talked about this before, but I was just so happy that we won the College World Series, but I didn't feel joy. I didn't have, I didn't know what to do the next day. I didn't know what to do for that following week. I didn't feel filled and I had to find Christ in that. And I think that is what makes our team so strong is that we're not afraid to lose because if it's not the end of the world if we do lose. Yes, obviously we've worked our butts off to be here and we want to win, but it's not the end of the world because our life is in Christ and that's all that matters. Yeah, um, I think a huge thing that we've really just latched onto is eyes up. And you guys see us doing this and pointing up, but we're really like fixing our eyes on Christ. And that's something where like they were saying, you can't find a fulfillment in an outcome, whether it's good or bad. And um, I think that's why we're so steady in what we do and, and our love for each other and our love for the game, because we know this game is giving us the opportunity to glorify God. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think once we figured that out and that was our purpose and everyone was all in with that, um, it's really changed so much for us. And I mean, I know myself, I, I've seen so much of a growth in myself with um, once I turned to Jesus and I realized how he had changed my outlook on life, not just softball, but understanding how much I have to live for and that's living to exemplify the kingdom. And I think that brings so much freedom. And I'm sure everyone's story is similar, but we all have those great testimonies that have really like shown how awesome it is to play for something bigger. Um, and I think that's just what brings me so much joy. and no matter the outcome, whether we get a trophy in the end or not, we're, this isn't our home. And I think that's what's amazing about it is we have so much more. We have an eternity of joy with our father and I'm so excited about that. And yes, I live in the moment, but I know this isn't my home. And um, no matter what, my sisters in Christ will be there with me in the end um, when we're with our, our King, so. The Apostle Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and unfading, having been kept in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. When you realize that your hope is secured eternally in Jesus Christ, then there is not a risk big enough that you will not take for the sake of him who delivered you from darkness to light, from sin to freedom, from lies to truth. By his atoning death on the cross, once you start living according to that spiritual reality, you will not be afraid to proclaim Christ no matter the circumstance and the setting that you're in. Funeral, wedding, job, school, driving a taxi, receiving an award, a press conference, may the name of the Lord Jesus Christ be glorified through you. This was the biggest step up in class and competition of your career and arguably one of your best performances ever. I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God is so amazing. He believed in me when I didn't believe in Him. I do not deserve all these blessings that He's given me. 
But I do believe he has a purpose for me, and me and Edson shared a prayer after the fight. He believes in God as well. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33, Therefore, everyone who confesses me before men, I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. And at this moment, the question is very clear, my friend. Will you deny Christ before men, or will you confess the name of the Lord Jesus Christ before men? That is the question of this last section. And that question is, what will you do with Jesus? What will you do with him? Many people have decided to put off Jesus for when they get old. Some have put off Jesus to the side for when they are done trying everything else in the world. But the problem is, my friend, is that tomorrow is not promised and death is imminent. According to John's thinking, the logic is clear. There's only one answer that makes sense. But here's the problem. If you find yourself with the many, or you find yourself with the council, sin doesn't allow you to do what makes sense, but it forces you to do that which is nonsense. Some have ridiculed, mocked, and made fun of Jesus Christ as they reject his gospel. I just love the way they love the Bible, and it's the greatest book, and they swear on it, but it has these things that are like comically stupid. And, and corrupt. I mean, God is so corrupt in the Bible. Others have even denied his very existence. You believe in Jesus, you believe in apart from my Well, I definitely don't in believe in Jesus. Okay, that's cool. Do you, why, why not? Uh, why not? I'm just curious. I think stuff. the better, better question is why? Why would I? Why? Because I'm not 10. Okay, because, I mean, it's obviously an ancient myth. But what about you, my friend? What have you done with Jesus? And what are you going to do with Jesus Christ today? There are many people who refuse to see that name being proclaimed in our country, in our world today. That is why Christians are the most persecuted around the world. Now, I want you to listen very carefully to this pastor explaining the amount of backlash and persecution he got for many people of our very own Congress simply for praying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You were at Congress. Congress recently. Yeah. And I'm so proud of you because you took once again another strong stand. I want you to tell the viewers this story because I think I was shocked. I think they're going to be shocked to hear how restrictive yeah. they were for a pastor praying. Yeah. Yeah. We're not exactly <laughs> sure when these rules came into effect, but at some point in time, if you're going to pray in Congress, which according to Benjamin Franklin and our founding fathers, that's how we are to open up our government. A lot of people forget about that, that there's yeah. supposed to be a separation of church and state. Well, our founding fathers said we're not going to start the business of the nation without prayer. And so Amazing. that happens continually. People don't realize that. And so I was blessed and honored that uh, House Speaker Mike Johnson invited me to come in, in to open up Congress in prayer. And uh, yet there are existing rules that say, for example, you, you, can have, you can't have a prayer more than 150 words. You're, <laughs> you're, you're to avoid father, offend some people. You can't bring up Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior what? because that's proselytizing. So I put together in a hurry, this is kind of embarrassing to reveal on TV, but <laughs> I put my prayer together quickly and sent it off. And then as uh, I got close to heading into D.C. Uh, in L.A., getting ready to go, um, I just reviewed my prayer again and I realized um, I just had to ask God, I'm sorry for this prayer. Mm. Yeah. And so I just, I rewrote it right then and there and put it in my pocket. And so went to Congress, had it there with me, prayed that prayer. And apparently the first sentence uh, caused the atheist to get all excited. I opened that prayer by saying, Father, we thank you for our Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> our, and, and just the first sentence got atheists upset, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Because if you're an atheist, why should you be upset at a prayer? Uh, but then they countered back by saying, you know, the separation of church and state. Well, I didn't ask to be there, <laughs> right? The government asked me to come and pray. So it just goes, you know, it goes with the days of deception mm -hmm. where people will express their worldview without God and they expect you to roll over and play dead. But if you know history, if you know your Bible, and if you certainly know what is referred to as American exceptionalism is that this nation was founded like no other. Yeah. And so when you know those things, then you stand firm in that because it's true. And um, I just refuse to be intimidated. I refuse to be uh, canceled. I just 
I just won't do that. And so I spoke the truth. The amazing thing, you guys, is that when the prayer was over, I stepped off uh, the podium there in, co in Congress and I was overwhelmed with greetings from congressmen and the chaplain. The chaplain said, thank you so much for praying that prayer. Because again, this is some existing rule that um, I think it was the Lord that had me absolutely have some divine disobedience if that works. I like that, it was. It just blows my mind how in America, where we yeah. are founded on religious freedom, that you were being told that you can't say the name of Jesus, that you can't say Father. I mean, this is who the this is the God that we serve and we're going to pray to. Right. And it's the you know, it's what our nation was founded on. And so I don't think people at home realize what's going on, but I love that you're standing firm. And I think that's a word for all of us is that we in this day and age of great deception have to stand up for truth and be clear in the truth. Mm -hmm. Because if not, deception is going to flood yeah. the world yeah well as a um you know giving honor to you stepping out in obedience and um or divine disobedience and saying this <laughs> prayer i want to take a look at this prayer i believe we have it queued up so let's watch uh, pastor jack pray at congress together the house will be in order the prayer will be offered by the guest chaplain pastor jack hibbs calvary chapel chino hills chino california Let's pray. Almighty God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, together we come before you in humility as a people in need of your forgiveness, your mercy, your goodness, and your grace. For these 250 so years, our fathers in this Congress have prayed for your guidance and protection. And so we stand here in humble petition that you today might do the same, that this nation and its unparalleled constitution, your great gift to all freedom-loving people, might be renewed here and across this land as a beacon of hope to all who seek peace. I ask you today, Father, to bring to us a great awakening of righteousness and confidence in you, who alone is mighty to save. Hear my cry in this hour of great need that we might be humbly blessed before you in the repentance of our national sins. You, almighty God, are the source of all wisdom, and there is no wisdom but that which comes from you. So please come upon those here who are the stewards over the business of our nation with your wisdom which comes from above. And with your holy fear, knowing that your coming day of judgment draws near, when all who have been and are now in authority will answer to you, the great judge of heaven and of earth, for the decisions that they make here in this place, I offer this prayer to you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Son, your Son, and our crucified Savior and resurrected Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. We got to get the hand clap <laughs> for that. You know, Rebecca, I was thinking that there was no doubt that it was God's divine strategy to have Pastor Jack there to do that prayer because he knew, the Lord knew, that he was going to obey and say those words. And I believe that those words should be printed out on a permanent plaque and put up in Congress <laughs> yeah, somewhere. I agree. And I mean, what a powerful prayer, a prayer of humility and repentance, which is where we our need nation this. needs right now. Yeah, it's we, we need do. to be turning to God and humbling ourselves yes. to form and repenting and praying that, you know, because this is his, this must be his nation. It's no wonder why this country and our culture is crumbling and degrading the way that it is. It is because Jesus Christ and his gospel are the number one public enemies. And if you dare associate yourself with that name and proclaim that name, you will surely get persecuted. The apostle Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 12 through 19, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial among you, which comes upon you for your testing as though some strange thing were happening to you. But to the degree you are sharing the sufferings of Christ, keep on rejoicing so that also at the revelation of his glory, you may rejoice with exaltation. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Make sure that none of you suffers as a murderer or thief or evildoer or troublesome meddler. But if anyone suffers as a Christian, he is not to be put to shame, but it is to glorify God in this name. For it is time for judgment to begin with the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the outcome
come for those who do not obey the gospel of God. And if it is with difficulty that the righteous is saved, what will become of the godless man and the sinner? Therefore, those also who suffer according to the will of God must entrust their souls to a faithful creator in doing good. Do not ever be alarmed, my friend, if you are persecuted for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, because there is more glory in being persecuted for the sake of Christ than to stay silent because of the fear of men and not proclaim the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So the question is a simple one. What will you do with Jesus? Now that you know this, now that you see this, now that the picture is clear that he is the Messiah, that he does have authority over death, hell, and the grave, what are you going to do with that? Will you waver like the many? Will you war against it like the council? Or will you believe it and become a disciple? According to John's thinking, the logic is clear. There's only one answer that makes sense. But here's the problem. If you find yourself with the many, or you find yourself with the council, sin doesn't allow you to do what makes sense. But it forces you to do that which is nonsense. Go through this life knowing that the death rate is one per person, nobody gets out alive, and rejecting the only one in the history of the world who has had an answer for the thing that all of us face and all of us fear. Don't let sin make a fool out of you. Ignore the many. Reject the counsel. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, let us not walk according to the course of this world, a God-rejecting world and a gospel-rejecting culture, but let us run to the cross where there is life for all sinners who put their trust in Jesus Christ. This is it for this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Share this video with a friend. If you want a t-shirt just like this, or a hat, or a mug, or a sweater, it's all listed in our YouTube store down below. If this is your first time on the channel, give us a thumbs up on this video. Leave us a comment down below, and I hope you subscribe today. If not, I hope to see you on our next video. With Love in Christ, John Henry with the Gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm.